It's Friday then. It's Saturday, Sunday. What? It's Friday then. Saturday, Sunday. What? Yeah, it's okay. What's up? This is Jeff. Welcome to Jeff's podcast, and today is the 150th episode of the podcast. And、um, I know this. I know this will be my last episode of the podcast, and I made a good start. Um, I've been starting making podcasts for quite some time since started in 2020, pala 2020. And yes, um, 2020, nag start ng ano, making podcast, making a podcast. Which because of the pandemic, tinga ko nga yun sa ano, tinga ko nga sa Spotify podcasts. Ah yeah, it's 2021 and it's been ano, three years nga ba? Nagstop ako sa 2022 ng podcast streaming, so I'm going to be on a hiatus. I'm on a hiatus to focus on on house duties, including um, let's see. Still looking for a job now, but by the way. <laughs> Anyways, to all the listeners and viewers, or viewers,、um, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. And today, I'm going to silent one for background music. So today, we're going to discuss about what is going on with Emily Forty, and Emily Forty is on the verge of getting an argument because.、Um, Because of the relationship troubles, including Colin Trinidad and Princess Mikilio, and also of course, Shaki decide Shaki has decided to move on with a new gig, which is making her solo appearance in Los Angeles, solo appearance in the U.S. Although, although Shaki is a new as I know, Shaki is new to participate to perform in the U.S. So, it's a good start now, but for herself and also for herself. I don't know what's gonna happen. Why the girl group became very silent because there are no plans on making gigs. Like what happened to some of the P-pop groups? I've already made their gigs. Pero hindi lang ano ah. Pero hindi lang ano. I'm not for it na ano. Nagstop sila sa gigs. There's also of course um other artists. Mostly mga solo artists that perform sila ng mami gigs. The performance of the Miami Gigs, by the way, for the solo artists.、Mm-hmm. And also, of course, I know the girls of Emily Forty are on the verge of getting breaking up because, as of today, I know, as of September thirtieth, as of September thirtieth, five Emily Forty members have already been graduated, including Abby Trinidad. Which has already been graduated back in April twenty twenty three, back in March twenty twenty three. I'm sorry. Then Andy Garcia has already been graduated in April twenty twenty three. Then Dian Mercado and Jamie have already graduated in August twenty twenty three. And the latest is Isabel Di Benegasha in September twenty twenty three. Let's check out about ano Isabel Di Benegasha. And Isabel was announced that she decided to quit ML forty. Because she'll be decided to participate in a U.S. P-pop group sensation, which came from Tape Incorporated in Bulaga. Of course, she decided to join the P-pop girl group promotion, and、uh, most of the P-pop as most of the member aspirants already heard about Emma the Forty because most of the some of them they don't understand Emma the Forty, but some they understand. It. Yes, they under they did understand about Emma the Forty. Because they're just they're just an ordinary P-pop girl group who perform cover songs based on Japan for the Thai translated songs. The money is still considered as covers, still considered as cover song dances. Also, of course, um, GM News has already been graduated in August twenty twenty three, and this is the second Emerald Forty member who graduated twice. The, la- the last time that she graduated was the recently concluded second general election, which happened in April twenty nineteen. She lost one of the twelve. She lost one of the twelve seats, replaced by twelve new members, including Isabel, who also participated in the second general election. 
general election that is and, uh, and this is the second envelope for the member who have been graduated twice since Ezra Montau's deal. Um, Ezel is one of the 12 members who lost their seat in the recently concluded second general election and she also lost her seat in the recently concluded uh, no, DGCKK so therefore she decided to participate as a member of Ken Kilsey before she graduated a couple of months later. Also of course um, Abby Trinidad has already been graduated in March 2023 after having an argument with the management and the members so it was her decision to graduate and Andy Garcia also joining in to decide to graduate so she decided to focus on her new career as a esports ano, athlete as an esports pala si, ano, si Andy Garcia shout out to Andy ha so what's next about ano? so the girls of ML48 are on the verge of getting a breakup the main reason why they are on the verge of breaking up is the relationship issue um, Mari Iyong really has released the uh, no, images of our relationship because he, because she did receive a violation of the law ban rule and also the latest is Colin Garcia, like Colin Trinidad. Although, although Princess Bikini releasing the evidence about Colin's relationship and uh, they are having an argument, each, they have a uh, arguing each other, so yes. They they arguing each other for those for the two members, and uh, the management, which is Halo Halo Entertainment, have no choice but to or have to wait for further de further details. So if they not, well, life goes on for Princess and Colleen about the love band rule. So Colleen has violated. Colleen did receive a violation of the love band rule. While well, Mari also did receive a love band rule, and also Princess this, did this, and also, hmm, lang. Oh yeah, wala pa masyad, di naman masyad bigyan ng love band violation for the, for other members. So, what, so what happened, so it's the management's decision to, they did not receive any violations. We need not receive any violations. Um, Baby Blue Trio, which consists of Colleen along with Francis Pinla and Amy Sito, have formed a new group after Jan Alarza announced their graduation in 2022. How about Jan graduated in 2022? Oh, tama. She only graduated in June 2022. And the trio had, I know, is expected to make some gigs including the US store although they will not appear they will they will not appear in the live concert together with fellow member and the overall captain of the girl group Shecky Arsena now Shecky has decided to perform her own self as a solo group and this is the first and I know she will be, she'll be performed in Los Angeles for the live concert live concert so life goes on for Shecky Yes, life goes on for Shaggy, and uh, I have to discuss what's next Naba for herself and the girls, which include the subunit and the main unit, ML3. We don't know what's gonna happen if the girl group have decided. We don't know what's gonna happen, and ML14 hasn't been active for quite some time because of that. Uh, there are no plans on making gigs, there are no plans on attending the live events. Because most of the artists have already fully booked. Even ABS CBN shows have already fully booked. Because what because MN48 is partnering with two companies. Halo Halo Entertainment and ABS CBN. We don't know what's gonna happen for the girl group, but only time will tell. Wala laman natin yan. Malalaman natin yan, what's gonna happen for the girl group. And also, of course, you know, the girls of ML48 did not attend other EBS-CBN projects, including the EBS-CBN poll, which is why the only exclusive to EBS-CBN are familiar stars. Even if you're going to transfer from Halo Halo to Star Magic, 
Or even the star magic, star magic, the star, star magic says no to transferring you. Therefore, they want to stay with Halo Halo or HHG, if that is. They want to stay in Mona for, for the time being. Because most of the, because the Emerald Fully Green Group is under the, you know, it's under the Star Hunt brand. So, under the Star Hunt brand. And, well, I don't see the no budget because of the, you know, because of the expenses from the network partner. Only the network partner will give a request permission for this. Only the network partner will be given a request permission to perform ML48 games. Although, I know. And most of the Asian and Japanese 48 groups have already performed their games. Um, Asian 48G, including, including BNK48, have signed a deal with JYE. B Entertainment to produce a new song based on to produce a new song which either an original song or even a cover song once again hey um ml 40 is also considered as a cover song girl group which is based on the, based on the songs from the japanese 48 so yeah tamayon it's based on japan 48 that is everyone knows about uh, Everyone knows about this from the background music, but the lyrics are different. Still, the background music is the same, and that's why it's the cover. It is a cover group. I wonder what's next for ML48, and uh, we don't know what's gonna happen. But only time will tell. If they're going to discuss what's next for the girl group after Sheki's LA Blood performance, it's either planning to stay alive or getting a disbanded. Unlike what happened to SGO48, um, SGO48 has all have already disbanded you know, in December 2021, and I'm expecting that the girl group might possibly. Who will remain to stay to stay or graduate before the year ends? But only time will tell. And I think he would die. Anyways, I'm going to run uh, up. But to take five more now. And coming up, I'm going to give a big announcement to make. So, I like style giants, stick around. And, uh, Relax, 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 but my time. Wait a few more to go. Welcome back to Jeff's podcast, and uh, I'm going to make a huge announcement to make up with. So, I'm going to make a huge announcement after the end of the show. So, mga easy, easy lang pa my Anyways, um, I'm going to make a huge announcement. And uh, back in August 2023, I've already attended the Otaku Expo Tanabata, and this will be my last anime convention that I'm going to attend. So I'm going to make a huge announcement for listeners and viewers. Um, starting Monday, October 2nd, I'm going to take a break, Mona, and. And for the first time in the history of my life, I'll be heading to Japan. No, really, no, no, seriously. Um, Japan. I mean, you mean I'm going to Japan? This is the first time in my life that I'm going to Japan. It does feel like a potaku Tokyo, potaku Shibuya, but this is the first time that I'm going to heading. That I'll be heading outside the Philippines, and uh, the last time that I'm going to attend it to was in Bohol back in mga mga yata no. Nakapotaw na Bohol. Um, kaso ano eh, medyo may may flight tripping kasi. And this is the first time that I'm all that I'm going to. That I'll be heading out. 
this is the first time that I'll be heading out. So yes. I don't know why am I go why am I I don't know why am I curious on heading out to Japan. It's because I know. It's because this is the first time this is the first time that I already attend in it to see the sights and sounds around the anime. Around the anime and also the culture. And also of course buying Japanese food like sushi, ramen. Or even ano, counted ba yung ano, sushi bake? Yung sushi bake is just considered as Japanese or gamang Pinoy lang talaga. I'm getting curious why sushi bake is one of the craziest trends. Sushi bake is one of the craziest trends during the pandemic. I'm going to check out some of the visits in Japan including the, including the Gundam RX-718 ano. Yokohama. I'm looking forward to that. And also I'm going to check out some of the anime shops including the including the anime anime store, the Kabukicho. Kabukicho. Also, and even of course I know. And also even of course trip to uh, no trip to Mario Kart. Real life Mario Kart. Kaso no Alam ko naman ba, alam naman bawal yata yung mag-kite racing sa kalsada, di ba? Dapat nasa race track. <laughs> eh, yeah. Ito sa bagay. So, anyways, ano? My thoughts nga ba is, ano, my September 28th thought. Back, last September 28th, I have made my thoughts. And, I'm thinking that I'll be, I'm thinking that I'll be heading out to, ano, I'm thinking that after attending the convention, which is the Otaku Expo, Tanabata, I'll be heading out to Japan for a, couple, for a single week. I say, it's, I know, they're having a family, you know, they're having a celebration treatment now. And this is the first time I'm going to trip to Japan. So, I'm, so, I'm yeah. a little bit sa heights and uh, flights. But, but I need to calm myself down. Of course, I need to calm myself down on taking off. And also, of course, I know, cosplay being a weekend is in the books now, but which happened this week, which happened on September 20th, October 1st, and Juna has already walked her world after her live performance and also of course Nada will be performing on Cosplay Mania on Cosplay Mania which happens on October 1st also of course I know also of course um alam pang nakalimutan ko ha oh yeah I, I was surprised that Cosplay Mania is teaming up with Crunchyroll to a no. Crunchyroll for a no, for a big event and Crunchyroll was announced that, he, that they teamed up with Cosplay Mania. Uh, um, excuse me, um, Crunchyroll is teaming up with Cosplay Mania to perform a special live event. And this is the first time, first time that uh, Orange Red is teaming up. Since the crunch, since the Crunchyroll Expo event will go on a hiatus, will go on a hiatus. Dahil sa ano, we don't know what's gonna happen on when they will return the Crunchyroll Expo in North America. But there is a possibility. Yes, there is a possibility that the Crunchyroll Expo might possibly head into the Philippines. I know, I know, I know, I know. I know it's crazy if Crunchyroll Expo might bring it. I know. Yes, I know if Crunchyroll Expo might possibly bring it here in the Philippines. We'll be hosting here in the Philippines after, after the uh, after the company is organized. The previous ones was the Crunchyroll Expo Australia, and also the latest is the, and the uh, most recent was the Crunchyroll. 
what's the control expo in the US. So I'm expecting that I'm going to looking forward to see if Crunchyroll is going to tapping in to bring Control Expo here in the Philippines. Interesting for that now, ba? Kapag nakaon tayo ng Control Philippines, Control Expo Philippines. We're excited to do that. <laughs> I know it's crazy, but manila man natin. I've already post I know I've already posted back in March 2023 and I know and I told myself could this be the possibility if Crunchyroll Expo is expected to be hosted here in the Philippines and that could be the good question now but it can happen not just only in Manila Manila is the host for the Crunchyroll Expo Philippines but also other events including Bacolod, Cebu and Davao mostly in Aba was the Philippines most mostly Naba was Manila is the host for Crunchyroll Expo and I'm looking forward to see what's in store Naba for the event. Once the no once Crunchyroll is going back to square one after the Crunchyroll Expo US event has already been cancelled. Also it'll be on a hiatus pala, I'm sorry. And also of course don't worry na if Crunchyroll Expo Australia might possibly return, pero Control Australia and Control will discuss muna. If it's not, well, that's their decision. They will not host Control Expo Australia. Malalaman natin yan. So, yes, I know. That's about it for this episode of the podcast, which is why this is the 150th episode. And if you have comments or suggestions, you can follow on my official Facebook fan page at facebook.com slash matches and news. You can follow me on my Facebook profile at Facebook profile, Instagram profile, Twitter profile, and also on TikTok profile, Jeff11 Manchester. And also on my YouTube page, YouTube website, which is youtube.com slash k boy YouTube.com slash k for boy you, fo- you can subscribe me here for all the topics. And uh, this will be the last episode, but this will be my 158th episode of the podcast. Well, that's about it for Jeff's podcast. This is Jeff, and uh, I'll see you in the next podcast. So until then, bye-bye.